Hello there folks, Kirk and Jay here with Kirk Giordano Plaster and as you know we do instructional videos. I'm going to show you how to fix a improperly applied window patch. And when I say improperly applied, that's being very kind. These fellas did this, uh, uh, <laughs> this skim coat. I'm going to call it a skim coat. And what you see here is They've got furry nails sticking out, they got wires, they got, they got all kind of weird stuff. So I asked the homeowner, I said, gee, how many years has it been on? And he says, man, about six. I said, so it doesn't leak. And he said, it doesn't leak. I said, well, there's worse things that could happen besides uh, somebody screwing up the finish. It could leak and have a nice finish. That's worse. So the fact that it doesn't leak, I told him, we'll skim it. Um, I, I told him what we were going to do, and he kind of looked at me and says, you can make it look better, huh? And it was kind of squinting and in the back of my head. I was thinking, <whistles> he had that Clint Eastwood look. And I thought, damn, I didn't want to say, dude, I do instructional videos. I know how to do this. But I said, I tell you what, man, if it doesn't match, it's free. And he, he was good with that. A lot of people get us from Craigslist too. They don't see our videos. But anyhow, I'll show you what we did prior. Now, this uh, blue stuff here is weld creep. And what I did first was I wire brushed the piss out of this wall, or as Jay would say, I gave it micro abrasions, meaning it's got dust on it. See that? Well, Creed, no product, no paint, no acrylics will stick to a dusty surface. So all those little black marks, that's scratch lines with this. I scratched the piss out of it. And then what I did is I put these, this weldcrete on it. And again, all this is is a liquid bonding agent. Woo, that's loud. So I got this liquid bonding agent on it. Why did I put liquid bonding agent on a skim coat? Because this skim coat is not very porous. They used a putty knife and they, uh, instead of leaving it porous or with the mechanical bond, it's, it's uh, smooth. So my next coat won't adhere to that. Anyway, I'll show you what we're going to do, guys. When you have this, and this is, it's uh, past the grounds of this. What does that mean? It's, it's too thick. So here's how we fix that, guys. We take a bucket of mud, a trowel, and we skim the perimeter first. I'll show you how we do that, guys. It's, it's pretty simple. And what am I using? Portland cement. So we're going to skim this perimeter. All right, we give that perimeter a little bit extra, and we give this perimeter a little extra. Why do we do that, guys? Because it's built up the most right there. Fortunately, this finish here, if you were to take it on the side, you could see it's very wavy. What does that mean? For me, that means that's a very forgiving finish. Uh, yeah, the fellas who did this original one, I mean, they didn't have a clue what they were doing, but they gave it the best shot. For me, I know what I'm doing, so we got to match it. Anyhow, uh, I'll show you how we put a little bit extra on it. The fellas before me didn't even cover this window. Shame on them. So, we give it that finish. Now I'm going to build it up over there, skim coat. Get my sides going here. And as soon as I'm done with the buildup, then I'm going to float it. And floating it means I'm going to bring the sand or aggregate to the surface. Okay, we'll put a little bit more right here because I want to feather in further. And by the way, guys, the blue stuff is. Larson's well creep, but do you have to use it? Uh, there's a lot of bonding agents you guys can use. I just happen to uh, like the Larson's. It's sold at my material supplier, which is for us professional stucco guys. But if you go to Home Depot, you go to Lowe's, they all have their own bonding agents. Here's another tip, guys. Full strength. Don't dilute the bonding agent. Some of my videos where I'm doing color coats, I show I'm diluting the bonding agent. Well, 
That is for a reason I'm doing a color coat finish. When you go stucco over a painted surface and it's in a skim coat like this or concrete over concrete, you do not dilute the bonding agent. That's the last thing you want to do. So it's full strain. The last thing I'm going to do is finish this little side here. Got a few rocks in this stuff. But nothing old Kirk can't handle. All right. Last thing, right underneath this window. Here, push it, take it, push it, take a little bit more off, push it. Okay. Now I kind of look at it. I want to, I know what I want to feather in so I can see it clearly from down here where I don't want too big of a, a bulge or a, a build out. So this part takes a little bit of time in guys. Look at the wall, look at what you got and you adjust to your mud. Could I have a little bit better mud? Sure, it could be a little soupier which makes it easier to spread. But whether or not it's stiff, soupy, I make it work. All right, now that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good area for tie-in. On this side, which was worse, I have a hollow right here. So I'll put a little bit more right there. All right, and again, this will not stick unless we put it over a bonding agent. My bonding agent, of course, is like I use in a lot of my videos, Weld Creed. Anyhow, guys, sponge, water. Clip it a couple times. Now, this part is easy for me. Now, notice this is a wavy finish. It has the sand or aggregate. It's uh, light in some areas, heavy in some areas, very wavy. So, it gives me the luxury of looking at that, thinking, man, I could match that. So, first thing I want to do while the sponge is still wet is hit my perimeter edges tie it in and it has to be when it starts to drag like this i can't even work it so when it starts to drag the cement that's time to clean that sponge float off now i'll start again and again i'm going over my my own weld creed I'll take my top here go sideways and it's starting to drag again. So I can hit a little bit in between, a little bit in between, but I know not to hit the edges because it's starting to drag. So when I do hit my edges, I'm gonna wet this again, which is right now. Take it, tap it, flip that sponge around, tap it on the inside. Why do I tap it on the inside? Because it goes with the natural arc here. If I slam it right here, which I see guys do, it bends these forward. You don't want that. Okay, so. Now we'll come here, take it there, feather it in here, feather it in with a lot of water on the edges. Now that's looking pretty good there. A lot of water here, a lot of water, and just get that side there. Come to this one. And rec Remember what I said earlier about this is very forgiving finish. That means that finish is pretty nasty. It's wavy, it's humpy, it's bumpy, and it's very simple to match. If it were straight, make it a little bit more difficult. Okay, so my last piece here, this edge, I got clean water on here, otherwise it's gonna drag. Now, I'm taking this, I'm just taking the window part now, and I'm giving it all a float finish to match theirs. I'm about to pull this window, because this is done. And some of you guys watch my stuff, you try it, you say, man, you know what? Uh, I did exactly what you said and I can't do it. Well, guys, I can't do plumbing or electric either, even though I've watched and witnessed it. I've been doing this a long time, so I'd make it look a little bit easier, but uh, anybody who does or at least attempts it, you're way ahead of the game, man. If you attempt it, you're not sure, hey, give yourself credit for attempting it. All right, this right here matches what they have. I got a little area here where when that dries, it would show. I know this because I've been doing this a long time, so I'm gonna knock that piece out. Meaning, a lot of water, hit it, come into the original, and make that transition a little sweeter. 
a little sweeter, the transition, and boom. And that's it, guys. Last thing you do when you're on something like this, it's about, it's about 95 degrees. One of the things, guys, if you work in cement, you've got to know your weather. If it's hot or cold, you improvise with the mix and your application. You always have to uh, know the weather. Clean a little bit of slobbers off the edges, and blam, guys, we are done. There it is. And if you look at it sideways, it's blended heavy here. So if you look at it from a from another angle, it's it's feathered in. The transition is is done well. Anyway, guys, uh, simple because we know what we're doing. Anyway, my name is Kirk. I'm with Kirk Giordano Plastering. Jason on the camera. As usual, we thank you guys for watching. We'll see you on the next one.